Hi everyone, looks like it's my turn now. That's why I'm wearing pants today. Um, thank you so much for not you. Sorry? But not you. Oh, wait. Well. Um, my name is Gennady Klein, I'm a postdoc at the University of Cape Town and working together with C-Search in Cape Town. I'm going to present to you guys a machine learning toolbox to detect and identify donkey sounds at species level. Uh, this project is part of a bigger project um, which we, we are using acoustics to investigate population dynamics of the endangered humpback dolphin. And basically, my work is to try to sort humpback dolphin sounds out of uh, modern hydrophones. Um, humpback dolphins and most of the dolphins produce mainly three types of sounds echolocation clicks that they use for navigation and hunting. Um, Burst clicks, which are clicks but with a short interclick interval, which are meant for communication, and also whistles uh, that are used for communication as well. What you know about whistles, yeah, they can be categorized as non signature whistles and signature whistles, uh, which is a kind of name of them. Uh, and Sasha presented like maybe the first day. Um, so, there are three more dolphin species which are like whistling dolphins and overlap the distribution with humpback dolphins, which is the killer whale, the common dolphins, and the Indo-Pacific bottlenose dolphin. Um, and although they, at first glance, they seem to be very different sounds, they, can, they have many features that can complicate our model. But you can say, yeah, wow, well, but uh, killer whale produced by phonic sound, they have like higher harmonics um, in high frequency. Um, yeah, but they also produce, let's say, another whistles that can overlap um, uh, humpback dolphins sound and also common dolphins. Uh, common dolphins are used in big groups, but they have a very different whistle as well, um, with a wide range of frequencies produced. But again, uh, they are in big groups, but they can have one male that will pop out of the group and would be one lonely whistle there, and you can maybe think, oh, that's a humpback dolphin, that's a bottle dolphin, we know. Um, well, the humpback dolphins, um, all the species also differ on the way they, on, they express their hypertone, so the humpback dolphins do not produce too much whistles, uh, but they also produce a lot of burst clicks, and they always, almost always click in. Um, and also bottle dolphins, they have very low frequency whistles. Um, but the tricky part here is that humpback dolphins might overlap whistles with uh, common dolphins uh, and bottom dolphins. That might be a challenge to, that can complicate our model. So what I need to basically do is to develop um, an algorithm that be efficient to detect sounds, dolphin sounds, and also to identify it correct at species level. So, uh, for every classification model, it needs our data set. Uh, for the training data set, I have used the whole C-Search library, uh, which is containing 600 minutes of common dolphins, 39 minutes of killer whales, um, and it's amount from the other species you can see. Um, those are recordings that you are both based, so we know exactly the species we are vocalizing close to our hydrophone. Uh, and our test data set, uh, we have used um, a long term deployment in Muscle Bay, uh, which suggests that it was recorded for 19 days. And for some of the days, we have uh, um, confirmed sightings close to the hydrophones. And also, to, for testing the dolphin detection, I have used a one day ground truth that I compared um, the results from the model and what I call the human detector, in this case, me. Okay, basically, the framework um, I thought, we thought, uh, was to take soundscape recordings from the place we are going to deploy our model, we get our species information. Um, and to build a scene and one, which is a detection one, uh, our class would be soundscape uh, noises, and our class two would be like the whole species. Um, and then we're going to build another model that will be the species classifier, 
so all the species would be our classes. So since we know um, the exact location, we're going to predict our model to have the outputs, and then we probably have a signature issues there uh, by confirming visually, and then we can follow for the market recapture service. Okay, the way we extract the sound, uh, we pass by a sliding window approach, uh, which takes three seconds uh, clips uh, along the whole uh, annotation that you have made. It will produce uh, these three seconds clips with these uh, parameters. Um, these uh, audio clips were um, augmented in the way that we mix a dolphin sound with soundscape that's supposed to increase our accuracy, which is um, known from, from other works. So we blending this, uh, these two audio files in one, and from this audio we build an image of five, five centimeters square, uh, 200 by 200. Uh, and this is the way I found to also increase the sound library, obviously the augmentation, but also to balance the data set. So I have blended the amount of uh, sounds enough to make the data equal, uh, balanced. And I also, it can be tricky to think about, but I also balanced the files for each species, because since I have annotated uh, echolocation, click trains, and also whistles, but you know that humpback dolphins produce pretty much more clicks than whistles, uh, I had maybe some file with uh, 700 image for clicks and another file with just three um, images for whistles. So I found this way to put a kind of weight on my data and, and have a, a balanced um, approach in this, time, in this way. Okay, uh, the method I have used for the classification test is the convolutional neural networks that you guys have been heard a lot here. Uh, this is a classification model for image classification. Images are basically numbers, um, and these convolutional neural networks use uh, layers with several filters or kernels. This um, filter will convolute, uh, convolve to the image, and will generate a future maps. And these future maps will serve as weights um, that will basically say uh, the features for the species we we're working. Okay, um, I have tried many, many combinations of the architectures. Um, I have tra um, tried customized architecture, which uh, I just presented in the best one here. I have tried more than 100, uh, but the best one was um, an arch architecture with three convolutional layers and 32 convolutional filters. <coughs> But I also uh, tested in um, pre-trained architecture, as Emmanuel just said in the first presentation. I have used uh, Resident 152 um, that can uh, have uh, up to 152 uh, convolutional layers. Okay, uh, for the prediction, that's roughly what uh, the algorithm does. It's gonna predict for each second of your audio file, um, let me do it again, it's fine. Uh, I'm going to read it for each second, um, an accuracy for dolphin detection, and if this accuracy is uh, higher than 70%, we consider that's a dolphin detection. Uh, and for each second, uh, also we got an accuracy for speech specification, that you might change a bit in the future because this gets it very slow. Uh, but the, at the end, I can determine an acoustic encounter. Um, the background about the acoustic encounter is uh, dolphins, uh, mainly barnacles dolphins, can mimic other dolphins. Uh, they have, well, we also need to work with false positives, though that's a, that's a truth. Uh, so I thought to have an algorithm to not only to be specific to identify the species, but it's specific enough to get the whole context. That's why um, I set to this framework. 
So the way I tested it, uh, as I said, I used it one day, uh, and I compared the results from the model and the results from the human detector. Uh, and intuitively, you can define your false positives, your true positives. Uh, the true positive, when the uh, model goes right, and the false negative, for example, when it say it was a uh, when it was negative, yeah. When you say it was when there was a loaf in there and the model didn't pick up. Um, those are uh, kind of results, let's say. Um, look at the difference between the species that we have just seven minutes annotated salt from killer whales um, and very different from the other ones. And this is the best part of the presentation because it shows that the model is perfect. Like, if you just validate your model, it will show like, I, I run it 31 times and I got it more than 99% of use for dolphin detection and a range of 96 to 94 for dolphin identification, but that's not the truth. That's not the real world. <laughs> we just validated the model with um, your data. Just to follow, this uh, is the way the algorithm will show you the results. It will show you the encounter, the number of detections you made, and the final answer, the species identification with the proportion of uh, detections for the species. Okay, um, this is uh, how I tested uh, the dolphin detection. And as you can see, I have tried, uh, I have used Pangod, which I, I think everyone knows it. Uh, it's a common software to uh, detect and identify uh, dolphin salts. In this case, I have used just a Wilson Mon detector as a, as a base. And you can see we're losing a lot of dolphin salts, like five hours and 51 minutes using this technique. And the best one, that I found with the Pusumata architecture, we're just losing 4, and four hours and 22 <coughs> minutes. Wait, I have better answers, uh, better <laughs> results. Uh, I also tried um, transfer, transfer learning, as Ramana just said in his presentation. Uh, it's just out of the world. Um, it was pretty much better than the Vanguard, but uh, my Pusumata architecture, which was very, very fine tuned uh, before the better. And I was very sad until yesterday night. Uh, <laughs> but then yesterday night I got my results that I did with, um, I was playing with the seconds. So playing with the size of the window, I'm extracting the sounds. I have tried with two, three, and seven, and you can just see my final results. Uh, I got the, sec the results for the two seconds, just 8.31 yesterday p.m. Uh, which I got very excited because, as you can see, we have just 35 minutes false positives compared to 2 hours and 24 minutes uh, compared to Vanguard, for example, and we're not losing too much dolphin sounds, or at least pretty much less than the other ones. Um, and I didn't have any of the final slides until last week, uh, which I got this model with the seconds window, and that was the first multi-species uh, classifier that we got. We can call it a result, actually, that you can differentiate uh, do, uh, compact dolphin counters from the other ones. I'm sure this is not the, the last one I'm going to do, uh, but I'm sure I found a way to where to go now, right? Um, and then I exclude the orca to have a, no, um, a notion of what would happen if you just do one species. And it got very good uh, comparing data from humpback dolphin. You can see that from one, one encounter uh, with 34 detections, I got an accuracy of 94%, which is very good. One thing I wanted to say now is that why I did use uh, clicks and burst clicks uh, for the detection. Well, you can see these 34 detections were based on this encounter which there was like three or four whistles. Most of the detections were classified based on the clicks and the burst clicks. And that's, I think, is quite promising. Um, and yeah, um, I think I didn't got to the end of this work. 
uh, unfortunately, maybe I have one more, more. Uh, but I definitely found a way to um, fine tune uh, um, CNN architecture to identify these guys. But also, I find a way to help people like me, which are biologists, not computer engineering, to automate the decision making process. So uh, I make it happen because I, I made it very for a city person like me to go there. Ah, now I want to do with two seconds. Now I want to do with a 70 DPI. Now I want to, anyway, you know. Um, and that's it. I want to thanks to my team, uh, you guys here, and NRF. And especially to AI for grants from Microsoft Azure that makes all possible with their virtual machines.